Hello everyone and welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. My name is Stefan. Thanks for coming to the channel. It's been a minute. Uh, I tried to do a video the other day and they were rehearsing for the air and water show outside uh, my building basically on the Chicago lakefront. So every time I was a minute or two in, a supersonic jet would uh, come by and that's been the case for the last couple days, including tomorrow. But uh, they've stopped for the day, so I thought I'd try to grab some uh, quick video here and talk about the developments in this 12-gallon bookshelf aquarium from Lifeguard Aquatics. Uh, there's a few things I want to highlight. In the last video about this tank, I talked about some of the newer residents, which were these rocket killifish or clown killies, as you see a female there. Um, the males have a much more uh, jet propulsion looking tail. Looks like they're shooting out uh, jet rays from the back and the females, that's much more subtle. Both have that glorious striped color. Anyway, I had six, three pairs in this tank that I put in uh, less than a month ago. I picked them up at the last swap I went to. And I remembered uh, how an earlier fail in this tank uh, was that a group of clown killies that I had gotten previous had all jumped within a week. And so uh, I didn't just try again uh, without making any changes. I started to let grow and build upon this incredible floating plant matter, which is red root floaters, duckweed, and a bit of frog bit. Perhaps some some other bits and pieces are up there as well, but it forms such a solid uh, ceiling on this aquarium that it deters the rocket killies from rocketing out of the tank. And so in the last month, I have lost one, but that was early on, and the remaining five of which this is a glorious chubby one of, have stayed in the tank. Now, I know they love the conditions uh, in this aquarium. It couldn't have been better designed for them. Uh, low flow, heavy plants, uh, acidic water, you know, low pH, the right temperature, great parameters, clean no predators or big fish of any kind. So ideal circumstances for them, for sure, but that doesn't deter killifish necessarily from jumping out of an aquarium. If they're spooked when the lights come on or there's a loud noise, like a supersonic jet or me bungling around with the filter over here, there's a little, uh, Thermo Filto Smart uh, 100 from Oase. If I'm like messing around cleaning something, I, you know, I, I hit the tank, uh, that could cause a jumping event and, and certainly that's possible. But uh, I'm happy to report that this uh, ground cover, actually water cover, uh, but it looks and kind of it makes me want to say ground cover, but it's on the top of the water, it has done its job, and these beloved little fish are staying in the aquarium, along with the neon green rasboras, and the margaritas pencil fish, and the chili rasboras. All those different fish are in here, in addition to uh, pygmy coriadoras and neocaridina shrimp. It's funny, it's usually hard to find the rockets, but that's the only thing I'm seeing. Maybe that's because it's the topic. There's a male, you see that jet flame tail? Awesome. Uh, the chili rasboras look great, and there's a big neo neocaridina shrimp. I do not believe that's an Amano, even though um, this camera shot, it will look like one. It's just a wild type neocaridina. Uh, they will revert to those darker colors after a few um, you know, if you let the culls stay in the tank and just do their thing, uh, they can lose their brilliant red or blue uh, when you first buy them. And the babies of the babies of the babies can be uh, a brown or wild color or a mottled color, speckled. I don't really care. Um, I just like having a bunch of shrimp in a tank like this to uh, 
get in down there and work on algae and things of that nature, of which I'm happy to report continues to not be a problem in this aquarium. Um, algae has never been a problem in this aquarium. Thank God, knock on wood, there's a cherry that's still got some of its color. Hello, buddy. Um, begging your pardon for the reflection. There's some cryptocorn parva, a nice group of it. And there's a cryptocorn flamingo right there. Um, ro uh, root stock from the uh, pothos that's growing out of the aquarium. Um, obviously java fern, there's a nubius behind it. And I've talked about what's up there, all those great red root floaters. Uh, cryptocorn tends to be the middle portion of the tank and it dominates. And then as we move towards the end, well, it's crypt all the way, isn't it? And then in the back, you see those glorious um, canopy driven, canopy growing rootstock from the pothos uh, that's up here. There's a couple varieties in there. Some I've just draped over the wood like that and their roots are right there. And some have been in this tank over a year and I don't know how much of it is like, a number of those roots are probably well into the substrate at this point. So pulling out that pothos to trim the roots could be a real issue, but I don't have any intention of doing that. I'm, I'm fine with, for the life of this aquarium and this aquascape, that, this piece up here uh, and everything around it, that little ecosystem within the ecosystem isn't changing a bit. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. There's a nice group shot of the community fish. You see the um, neon green rasboras. They have what looks like a reverse dorsal fin, like a shark fin, but underneath them. Uh, you don't really see the blues and the greens in this tank because unfortunately, one of the uh, side effects of having a heavy duty uh, floating plant cover is it um, takes out some of the light. Now the fish dig that, it makes them feel safe and secure, but you do lose some of the colors. Um, the chili rasboras, you can see some of them back in in betwixt and between. There's at least a dozen of them in here. There's quite a few fish in here, you know, as per my usual, I overstock because I heavily plant and I um, I'm on top of all the maintenance for these aquariums. By the way, that yellow orb back there, that's just a really beautiful mystery snail. Um, kind of big for scale when it comes to this tank, but whatever, right? I bought a whole bunch of them in different color morphs and I tossed them in all my aquariums. And, you know, I love mystery snails. They're, they're big, you know, um, but uh, whatever it's funny now that I pointed it out that's all you can see right that yellow balloon what a fantastic color though how about that God mother nature and a little bit of human intervention can gr create some terrific color morphs but what I wanted to say uh, I do have well I've been saying what I wanted to say <laughs> but this uh, there are consequences to having this uh, floating cover be so heavy uh, a you have to keep on pulling it out, you know, and you have to get used to throwing perfectly good red root floaters away. I have no problem throwing duckweed away, but I always kind of grimace when I have to chuck these beautiful uh, plants away because I don't have anywhere to uh, get them to in the short amount of time a floating plant can be out of water. It is what it is, so I just throw those out. Um, I don't want to start a duckweed and red root floater colony in my other aquariums at this time. So uh, I chuck them, and believe it or not, I have chucked quite a bit before even filming, but it still, it seems to just immediately fill the holes uh, right when I pull them out, uh, which is which is again, the, you know, the magic and power of nature. We, we put our hands in the tank and immediately when we take them out, <laughs> it comes right back to where it was. Here's a couple of those margaritas pencil fish that I've talked about. Uh, and in a previous video, I said they're a wonderfully uh, beautiful alternative to the red Bexford pencil fish. Uh, I think they're just a lot prettier and they're really not much more expensive maybe a buck or two more a fish. Uh, 
if that. So highly recommend the margaritas pencil fish or wild uh, pencil fish, sometimes it's called. So as I pull back, you can kind of see the overall panorama of this lovely tank with the uh, immersed and emerged growth and the sort of fun stuff along the sides and all around this tank. Of course, the super duper wallpaper with the fun fish behind it. And here we are, no jet planes to interrupt the video. I hope you found it enjoyable. As always, everybody keep your hands in the tank. Ciao for now.